Yes, definitely. Um, um, but everything happens for a reason, and I believe the time for me to be, to be back in the UFC is now. I'm so much better of a fighter, so much more well-rounded, and uh, much more confident. And uh, this is the time. So what do you think? You, you mentioned things happened for a reason. What were the reasons back then that you, you maybe you needed to be out for a little while? Oh, just no, the loss, the, the, the losses that happened, I got cut. It just happened for a reason. The reason, I don't know, God knows. But, you know, it, it happened. And, uh, you know, I just go with it, roll with the punches and, and, and got back to the drawing board and, and got my, my, my career back together. Do you remember kind of where you were mentally at the time when you, the Franklin fight was a, it was a good fight. Uh, you took a lot of abuse. He took a lot of abuse as well. Um, and then the Swick fight, things kind of changed for you because we saw a super aggressive David Loazzo in all the fights before that, and then the Swick fight was kind of bizarre because uh, both you and he kind of looked like you were holding back. So wh where were you at that point mentally? I was good at that point. It's just that that um, uh, Mike Swick just had a great game plan. You know, just um, whenever I, I tried to exchange too much, he would shoot for for for, for a takedown and and take me down and work work the ground and pound and it was it was it wasn't as exciting as the fans would want it to be but um you know he had a great strategy to, to hold me down to stop my attacks you know so what was it like for you as uh, as GSP is kind of moving up the ladder and gaining more and more fame and you're trying to fight your way back in I mean oh, your your buddies with him you're not rooting against him but did it seem kind of strange since you were the guy who was kind of the groundbreaker no no it was it was actually motivating it's motivating to see your boys doing so well you know is this is this Patrick Cote also doing well um in the UFC uh, Jonathan Goulet uh Keith Jardine Rashad Evans Nate Marquardt George St. Pierre there's a lot of good guys that I train with on a regular basis that are doing good in the UFC and um, I'm very happy for them, you know. So it's motivating. I took to Ed Herman. He thought you might actually take him down, which surprised me. Um, I've been doing a lot of wrestling. He's 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 been doing his research, you know. Uh, I've been doing a lot of wrestling, a lot of a lot of everything. So so I'm I'm just ready for 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 anything. You've always struck me, David, as a very positive guy in the gym. You know, I think you're good with all your teammates. That uh, you got a good sense of humor and you're a happy guy. But after the UFC, you you lost a couple of fights. Was that a dark time for you, or did you handle it well? No, never lost faith. I've been through uh, stuff that's way worse than losing a fight in my life. You know, and uh, and uh, you know, a fight is a fight. It's a day at work, and and you know, there's just go back to the drawing board and and you know work your way back up. That's how it is, you know. Because you survived a car crash as a teenager, right? It was pretty serious. Yes, yes. I was uh, 17 years old. You know, I, I, uh, I had a pretty uh, bad car accident. Uh, two discs got fractured in my spinal cord, C5, C7. And, uh, you know, from there I had a big question mark, not knowing what was going to be next. You know, am I going to walk again? Am I going to do sports again? And, and you know, just, just working my way back, you know, to life, to having a normal life, already that is 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 very tough, you know, and um, so nothing nothing could stop me in the fight game. Right, the uh, I was gonna say the one thing we do have to take care of though. Everyone else here has uh, sponsor mentions all over them. I think you're the first UFC fighter I've ever seen with a plain black hat on. Um. <laughs> yeah. No. Because where, where did you get that hat with, with nothing on it? Are <laughs> you supposed to have some kind of logo? You guys have to wear something. Yeah, well, um, uh, it's yeah, it's very interesting that you said that because th that's probably the only clothes that I have that are not MMA related. You know, right. I just, uh, you know, I have, uh, I only have tap out hats and 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 shirts and Silver Star shirts and you know. So <laughs> today is a day where I don't know. I looked at, yeah, just no, I, it just by by coincidence, I just picked up a hat and put on a shirt and that's it, you know. You uh, you know what music you're gonna walk into? Yes. Is it, uh, what is it? It's rap music. Okay. I won't well, tell who you. Who are they? I won't tell you, secret. We gotta tell, you, well, is it, uh, you were in some videos, right? I saw you in some, a couple of rap videos. Not French, yeah. Rap, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And who was that? Yeah, well, I did uh, Sans Pression, it's a French rapper. I did a, there's a Yvon Crevé, another French rapper from uh, out of Quebec, and uh, these are two uh, people, and you're in, you were in videos with yeah, each other videos. Yeah, there's another artist called uh, Impos. Uh -huh. He's a he's another uh, um, rapper out of Montreal. People people from the community that I that I know very well. How'd you think you looked in the videos? Fly. Did you look tough? 
fly. It didn't look tough. Looked fly. To be honest, when I saw him, I kind of chuckled. I was like, oh. <laughs> you, were, you were trying to look like a, like a badass. Yeah, they tell me. They tell me, Dave, put on a mean face. I'm like, man, I'm here to chill out. <laughs>